everyone, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and I'm so happy you're with me and with us tonight. Uh, This is the Daily Dose of Hope, and the Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis to connect directly with God. And the way we do that is we simply connect you with Him through the Holy Bible. Now, there are 66 books that make up the Holy Bible, and like tonight, most of the time, we use one of those books. And tonight we're going to be using 1 John. We're going to be using one verse in 1 John. 1 John 1, nine. You can see it here next to me. When can I talk to God? That's our series that we're in. And tonight, the answer is in a Bible study. You can actually talk to God in a Bible study. So we're going to um, look at that. And um, before we do that, let's pray. Dear Lord and Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a good and mighty and powerful God. We love you. We praise your holy name. We pray again, Lord, for the people of Russia and the people of Ukraine who do not want this war. They do not want this conflict. But yet there's something that's pushing both sides. Um, Lord, I pray that your blessing would come upon the nation of Ukraine uh, and the nation of Russia for peace, Lord. And I also pray for protection and safety for all those that are trying to flee and get away. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to remind you of a couple of things. If you could look down here below me in the description box, uh, you'll see two channels, the Rumble channel and the YouTube channel. We would appreciate if you would go to the Rumble channel and the YouTube channel and press the subscribe button. If you subscribe to our channel, it'll help us out tremendously. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it gives you an opportunity to see our very latest videos when they come out, right after they come out. And you can also easily send them to your friends and share them with your friends through YouTube and Rumble. Also, please go over to Facebook and go to our Facebook page called The Daily Dose of Hope. Press the like and the follow button. That will help us out. And if you really like The Daily Dose of Hope, you can go over to our Daily Dose of Hope group page. And that Daily Dose of Hope group on, YouTube, on Facebook is a great place for you to write prayer requests, post your own postings, as long as they're appropriate. And you can invite your friends to join that group And that group continues to grow. We keep having more and more people come and ask to be a part of that. So that's great. Now, let's get on with our subject of today, which is, when can I talk to God? We have, this is our third video, okay? Uh, The first one was prayer, okay? And then yesterday was by getting into his word, reading his word. And then tonight, we're going to answer the question, when can I talk to God? And this one is going to be through Bible study. And I'm going to share you, show you how this is different from just reading his word. Okay, so let's jump over there and let's get into 1 John 1, 9. And here's what we read in the New King James Version. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so one verse. But here's the point. We want to know when can we talk to God. The first video we did was on prayer. You can talk to God by praying to Him. The second video that we did was uh, on getting into the Word, reading the Word daily, having a quiet time with God. You remember that from the video yesterday. And today, we want to encourage you to answer this question, when can I talk to God? by very simply having a Bible study. Now, a Bible study is not meant for you alone. What you do alone is called your quiet time with God, okay? A Bible study is meant for you to be with other people discussing the Word. Now, one of the great things that happened during the, um, we'll call it the pandemic, One of the great things that happened during this virus era that we were in is that Zoom actually became 
very common for all of us to use. Our students are using them, our children are using them. Um, we're using them for office meetings. We're using them for family get-togethers. We even heard people in the first year of the virus uh, using it for the holidays. Even as weird as that is, they did that. So you can have a Bible study online. I go each week, I attend two Bible studies. Uh, one is a group of men in California that we met live for, oh gosh, all the way up until about, well, I was with them all the way up until 2018. And then when uh, I moved to the, back to the Philippines um, and a few guys moved from there, we've since become Zoom a meeting. So we meet because of the virus and because of uh, some of us have moved, we meet online and I meet with those guys once a week on Wednesday mornings and we study the word. Right now we're studying the book of Zechariah, who is a minor prophet. In fact, I'm, I'm preaching or not preaching, but I'm teaching through uh, chapters 12, uh, 13 and 14. And uh, you're invited if you want to come, just send me a message and I'll send you a, a link to get there. Um, I also meet with a second group, which is a group of my high school uh, alumni, my high school classmates. And that's led by a, a friend of mine named Keith. And um, I'm just a study partner in there. But there's a group of, I think, 10 of us in that group. So Bible study is meant for us to get together and read the Bible together and observe what's in the Bible and then decipher what the Bible means. That's Bible study. Now, again, I'm going to reiterate this. It is not meant for you alone. You do not study the Bible alone. Bible study should be in community. When you, when you do the, the alone time, that should be between you and God. Or if you do what I do, um, I do a lot of teaching of the Bible um, here on the Daily Dose of Hope and on Hope Hill Sunday Morning Gathering. And, of course, I have to prepare, so I do a lot of that. But that's more academic than it is my devotion to God. So I really want to encourage you, when you think of Bible study, that should be in community, okay? Now, some of you are going to write me a note, and you're going to put in the comments, or you're going to put somewhere on YouTube or on Facebook, you're going to say, but wait, I study the Bible by myself, um, and I can do it just fine. You can, but that's not what Bible study was meant for. Bible study was meant for community. It's best when you're with others so that you can discuss how God is making you feel, how you felt when you read that, um, what you thought was meant there, and the other person can share what they meant what they thought was meant there, and then the two of you can put it together and maybe come up with a biblical conclusion. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So let's look at 1 John 1, 9. Now this is interesting because it's about confession. It's about a believer confessing to God and then God being faithful to not only forgive, but also um, to justify them or to make them feel just and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. That's what this, te this text is about. That's what this verse is about. But imagine you read this alone, and you're not a um, theologian, or you read this alone, and you've never read 1 John 1, 9 alone in context. By the way, this is just one verse. I would encourage you to always read in context. But you read this, and you have no idea what they're talking about, confession. And in fact, you have no idea that this was meant, the confession was meant to be between you and God. Now, the more people that are in your Bible study, the more you're going to get closer to the truth of this text. If it's one of you, just by yourself, you're probably not going to understand it very well. Now, you can go to a concordance, and maybe you can go to some other uh, Bible help and try to do your best to figure it out, and you might. But again, in community, especially when the community is two, three, four, five, ten people like are in my Bible studies, then really what happens is you're going to actually put your heads together and come up with something that's more biblically based 
rather than you just kind of guessing through it. Does that make sense? So I thought of this might be a practical way for you to study the Bible. And there's an online help. I'm going to put it on the screen. It's called the Bible Study Tools. It should be right there. There it is. The Bible Study Tools. And it says, Grow Deeper in the Word. This is under BibleStudyTools.com. I do recommend this group. I rarely use this um, because typically the two groups that I'm in, either one, I'm not a, neither one of them I'm the leader of, and only one of them I really teach in. Uh, uh, and I really rarely use this because uh, usually this, a host would use this, okay? But what's important here is for you to scroll through this. And if you scroll down, they have popular verses that you could study for the Bible, like John 3.16 on the right side over there. And then they've also got featured topical verses. You can see those over there, like healing Bible verses, encouraging Bible verses, forgiveness Bible verses. And if you need to actually figure out what you're going to study for your next Bible uh, study with your friends and with your colleagues. Some people do Bible studies at work. Uh, some people like to do Bible studies with the people that they go to church with. This is a great tool that you can use called Bible Study Tools, and anybody can use this. It's really pretty simple. And I encourage you to start in uh, finding a group of Christians and study the Bible together. And if you're looking for a group to join and you need help, and maybe you want to start one, or you're looking for a group and you need some suggestions on how to find one, send me down in the chat. You can do it right down here. Send me down in the chat any questions you have. Maybe you want to get help finding a, a study group or you need help um, starting a group and I can give you some suggestions offline, okay? But I really want to encourage you to talk to God through Bible study. Now, what does God do through Bible study? We still have the verse up on the screen. What does God do when you study the Bible? Well, when you and like, for example, my uh, Wednesday morning group, when there's 10 people in the group and they're all talking about the Bible and they bring up different things that they've read in the Bible study, then everybody in the group listens and can think of what that person's saying then if the question comes up, what should we think about this? Or how do you feel about this? You're also answering that same question inside. And now all of you, all 10 of you, are kind of putting your heads together. Not only are you coming up with what the Bible means, but you're listening to God speak to you. And sometimes God speaks to you through his word, like we le learned yesterday. But he also speaks to you through another person. And that's why Bible study is so important. Because when you're with other Christians and they're telling you what this verse, um, how it impacted them or what they observed in this verse, that comes into your ears, makes you think about it, and now God impresses upon your heart something from your past or an experience that you've had, and that makes you think more clearly or understand God's word better. And really what God is doing is he's talking to you through Bible study. Does that make sense? So in this particular verse, 1 John 1, 9, I first discovered this in a Bible study. I never knew that God wanted me to confess my sin to him. Now this doesn't talk about asking for forgiveness. This doesn't say that the reader should ask for forgiveness. This says that the reader should confess their sin to God. And when we do that, we know that he is faithful, that he's just, going to serve justice, and he's going to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, there was somebody in the Bible study with me that said, do you know what righteousness is? Or the question was something like, do you know what righteousness is? And the person next to me said, yeah, that's when God and I have a vertical relationship. And I said, vertical relationship? I asked the person, what do you mean? And they said, that's when I can stand before God knowing that I'm good with God. So when God cleanses me from all unrighteousness, 
that's when I'm totally righteous and I can stand before God knowing that he doesn't turn, need to turn away from me because of my sin, but he turns towards me and he loves me. Now, I wouldn't have figured that out if I studied the Bible on my own, in my own room, or during a quiet time with my cup of tea or my cup of coffee. But I learned that because I was with a group of people that all discussed this verse together. And when they did, that person next to me started talking about this vertical relationship, and that made me think. What does that person, how does that person even know about a vertical relationship? What does that mean? And what is righteousness? All those things went through my head. And it's because of that Bible study that I became, the first time I ever became familiar with 1 John 1, 9. And that impacted my, my life. Because now I know when I sin, I can come before God and I can f confess that sin directly to Him. And I know a few things are going to be true throughout that time. One, He's going to forgive or he's going to be faithful. I know he's going to be just to forgive. And he's also going to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And all I have to do is confess to him. See, I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't in a Bible study. And God wouldn't have been able to speak those words to me if I wasn't in a Bible study. So this is why it's highly, it's highly likely in your life that you're going to get, if you're a Christian, you're going to be invited to a Bible study. And my, um, I guess my charge for you, my, my encouragement for you, is to say yes to that Bible study. When somebody invites you to a Bible study, go. You may not want to do it. It might not be convenient for you. It might be a little uncomfortable for you, especially if you're new to the Bible. But go to that Bible study and allow God to talk to you, okay? That's it for me. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Let's pray, and then we'll say goodbye through a little bit of song. Dear Lord, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a good and mighty and powerful God. We praise your holy name. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for being a sovereign God. Lord, please end this war in Ukraine and Russia and bring their troops back to their bases. Lord, end this silliness that's going on. There's a lot of evil in the world. If it's part of your will that all this is happening, then we will yield to you, Lord. But if this is not part of your will, Lord, we pray that you would squash those that are evil and protect those that are trying to do the right thing and get away. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Okay. Here's a little bit of Sky Liche as we say goodbye. Don't forget, join us tomorrow at Hope Hill's Sunday morning gathering at 10 a.m. I'll see you bright and early. Bye-bye. Here you go.